Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Share the room with at least 10 people. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Share the room with at least 10 people. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Share the room with at least 10 people. Shalom to you, Sister Shlomith. Hope you're doing well. I uh, saw so, uh, the video that you had up. Good job on uh, your commentary. It's good to have brothers and sisters joining up together and, you know, getting a question and answer format where they could talk about different things. You know, uh, do me a favor. Share the room with at least 10 people. If y'all could do that, that would be phenomenal. If the audio is clear, put a one in the chat. If you're able to hear me, put a one in the chat. Just want to make sure everybody is able to hear me uh, clearly. Bear with me as well. Um, my internet is a little slow over here. So just uh, getting ready to have a discussion on the recent situation going on. So make sure you share the room with at least 10 people. The more we share, the uh, closer we can get to our goal. You do know we are in the continent of Africa teaching the truth in regards to black history and the Bible. We're reaching out to the diaspora and we're teaching our people scattered all over the place. But a keen understanding that we have to have is in regards to prophecy and the things going on in society today. So a lot of times the Bible says watch and pray. So that's why we want to encourage you. While we're in these times to make sure to watch and pray. Thank you. Trying a little something different. Yeah. All praises. All praises to the most high. It's always good to have positive dialogue where you're able to discuss different things. You know, so it's always great to, you know, have discussions, especially those in the Hebraic community uh, talking about different things. Shalom to you, Rex. Hope you're doing well. Shalom to you, uh, H. Hope you're doing well. All right, y'all, we got at least 15 people in the room. I'm waiting for the room to get to at least uh, 30 people, and then we'll get into our topic. Do me a favor, share the room with at least 10 people. The more people, uh, shalom to you, Melissa. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are well. The more people that are in, the more we can uh, start the discussion. So just waiting for more people to uh, come into the uh, live. Do me a favor, y'all, share the room with at least 10 people. That way... More people can join in on this live stream discussion. All right, we're about at about 40 people. So we'll go ahead and start the live discussion. So according to Reuters News, this is dated today, April the 14th, 2024. Uh, time is at 11, 16 a.m. OK, so Moscow, April the 14th, Russia said this Sunday it was extremely concerned by Iranian strikes on Israel and called on all parties to exercise restraints, but said tensions would remain high until the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians was resolved. So now it's important to note, folks, that recently the state of Israel did bomb a local embassy and that embassy housed Iranians, okay? So it's very important to know that. When it comes to why things are going on, you have to understand the motivations between the aggressor and those that are minding their own business, okay? When you bomb an embassy, I just want to ask you a, just a general question. If you, if you bomb an embassy... Is that an act of war? Is that, is that, is that, or is that something that, you know, you're just, you know, it just happenstance is something collateral. Is that an act of war? Okay. Somebody said, uh, Rex said, Ab absolutely. I consider that absolutely as well. So now according to Wikipedia, let's get some, um, I would agree with Jason. Yeah, I would think so as well. I would agree with what Jason says. Uh, Melissa says definitely is. Z-Walk also. Okay. 
I, I concur. I agree with that. So the Israeli bombing of the Iranian embassy in Damascus occurred on April the 1st, 2024. That was literally less than two weeks ago, folks. Today is the 14th. So that would make it two weeks. Okay. It says on the 1st of April, an Israeli airstrike destroyed an Iranian consulate annex building adjacent to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria, deleting 16 people, 16 people, including a senior Quds Force commander of the IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary uh, Guard Group uh, Corps, Brigadier General Mohammed Rezi Zahedi, and seven other IRGC officers. Two civilians were also deleted in this attack. The airstrike took place during a period of heightened tension between Israel and Iran. And amidst the Israel slash Hamas war and the Israel slash Hezbollah conflict. A couple of quick facts. So the bombing that occurred in the Iranian embassy, and mind you folks, this is for educational purposes only. So please do uh, share the room with at least 10 people. Okay. Mind you, the uh, situation occurred this year, 2024. It's part of a greater conflict between Israel and Iran. It's also a greater conflict between Israel and Hamas and a conflict between Israel and Syria, because currently there's a civil war going on with uh, the Syrian situation. Okay. So it's located in Syria, Damascus. The target allegedly was the Iranian consulate in Damascus. This occurred at uh, April the 1st, 2024, approximately near 1700 hours. Uh, the Iran retaliated with a missile airstrike as well as drone strikes. Okay. And 16 people were deleted, including seven IRGC soldiers, five Iran-backed militia, one Hezbollah fighter, allegedly one Iranian advisor, and two civilians. So many countries, as well as the international organizations, condemned the attack on April the 13th of 2024. Iran retaliated. So now this is just yesterday, folks. Iran retaliated just yesterday against the attack with missile and drone strikes against the the Israeli state. So now, primarily, primarily the targets of that base uh, from which the attack on the consulate was launched. Here's some background information for you. Since 2013, Iran was uh, maintain the presence of its troops in Syria in response to the Syrian civil war. So this is an agreement between Syria and an ally, which is Iran, meaning what? this The nation state of Israel had nothing to do with this. This was this particular agreement between the Syrian government and the Iranian government. So now, additionally, it has been involved in training and funding allegedly paramilitary forces from Hezbollah, along with foreign militias from Iraq and Afghanistan, not only in Syria, but also in neighboring Lebanon. This is according to uh, exclusive Iran guards pull officers from Syria after Israeli strikes. Reuters article, February the 1st, 2024. That's where that is from. Okay, shalom to you, Lioness. Hope you're doing well. Okay. So now let's continue reading on. It says, with the onset of the Israel Hamas war in October 2023, Israel has increased its intensity of attacks on Syria from the 12th to the 22nd of October 2023. Uh, the Zionist state launched at least three attacks on airports in Syria, particularly on Damascus and Aleppo. Now, the quote from where this is from is also a Reuters article that says Syria says Israeli missiles hit Damascus and Aleppo airports as dated October the 20, October the 12th, 2023. 
Okay, so as this, as this news information comes along, folks, we try to share it as quickly as possible to inform the general public about what's going on and give you some detailed insight as it relates to biblical based prophecy. If the uh, if the if the audio is clear on the channel so far, please put a one in the chat. If the audio is clear on here, please put a one in the chat. Do me a favor. We got 145 people in the room. Let's get the likes up to at least at least 5K. Okay. Let's tap the screen. Let's get the likes up. Share the room with at least 10 people. And let's tap the screen to get the likes up to 5K, please. Thank you so much for tapping the screen and getting the likes up. All right. So with the onset of this uh, conflict going on, it's very important for us to understand all the actors involved with this situation. Notably, Israel carried out an assassination of Razi Mosavi, a senior Iranian general. Okay. So first they, first they go and they bomb the consulate. Okay. Second, the person that's involved with this situation that gets deleted ends up being a general for a foreign government. Okay. So now, would that be, now, now I'm asking a question for the audience, would that be a declaration of a war? Yes or no? Because obviously, if, you, if you're going to, if you're going to do an airstrike, and specifically target a foreign government's consulate, an embassy. You have to understand that there's going to be repercussions for that act. That's not something you just outright just do willy nilly. That means somebody strategic strategically sat at a table. They had discussions with advisors. They said, what is the likelihood of this being successful for us? Right. What would be the repercussions of such actions, right? That's something people would discuss. You see what I'm saying? So for them to go out of their way to do this thing, it's definitely worth investigating and having a discussion on how this can impact the global society. Because... If you start activating and agitating all these people in different regions or across the so-called Middle East, across Europe, across all the way down to America, across Africa, what this will do is, is cause these nation states to get dragged into a global conflict, folks. We're, the reason why I'm going over this is because we're seeing the beginning stages of World War III. We're, we're literally seeing the beginning stages of World War III. Is, is, that, is that something that would make you say, you know what, that's concerning. When, when global powers start doing things and it in, influences other people around the region, that's something to pay attention to. So the assassination of Razi Mosavi, a senior Iranian general in the Syrian capital of Damascus, happened on the 25th of December, 2023. And Brigadier General Sadid Ahmed Zadeh, an intelligence officer with the IRGC Quds Force, on the uh on J january 20th 2024 so now let's get into the attack on the 1st of april 2024 14 days ago the iranian consulate annex building adjacent to the iranian embassy in damascus was destroyed by an israeli air strike iranian ambassador hossein akbari alleged that the consulate building was targeted with six missiles from the Israeli F-35 warplanes. And this is, the source for this is from, quote, Iran accuses Israel of killing uh, Iranian military commander 
others in airstrike on consulate in Syria. And this is according to CNN News. OK, so everything we're saying, folks, here, we, we want to give you sources of where the information is coming from. So that way, you know, we're not making stuff up. Uh, that's a good comment that Z Walk just made. When you have NATO just in the beginning of this year, 2024 in January, having a military drill in regards to preparing for conflict with Russia, that's something we need to pay attention to. That's something we need to pay attention to. Okay. All right, let's continue on. So according to the New York Times, uh, they stated that the four Israeli officials anonymously confirmed that the Israelis were responsible for the attack. That's according to the New York Times. The suspected primary target of the attack was the Quds Force commander of the R I R G C, Brigadier General Mohammed Rezi Zahedi, who was deleted in the attack. According to the Guardian, Zahedi was a critical figure in the relationship between Iran and Hezbollah. NYT reported that an anonymous source from the Revolutionary Guard said that the strike targeted a meeting between Iranian intelligence officials and Palestinian, Palestinian militants, including leaders of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who were discussing the war in Gaza. Okay. The footage and the photos from the consulate area after the uh, attack showed extensive damage, fire, and smoke. Um, Iranian media reported that the building had been completely destroyed and that the ambassador and his family who were housed on the embassy next door were unharmed. Thankfully, the uh, Canadian embassy building on the other side of the consulate building was also damaged in the attack. So hold up. Wait a minute, folks. So not only were the Iranians property damaged. Now you have Canadian, the Canadian embassy. That's all the way across the, the pond now, across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. The Canadian embassy was also damaged during this attack. It says with at least some of its windows destroyed, the embassy has been close since has been closed since 2012 because of the Sir Syrian civil war though it is still owned by the Canadian government. Now, casualties. 16 people were officially uh, deleted in total, including seven IRGC soldiers, five Iran-backed militia, and Hezbollah fighter and an Iranian advisor. In addition, uh, Zahedi casualties include Zahedi's deputy uh, brigadier general Mohammed Hadi Haji Rahimi and five Iranian officials, including Hossein Aman Elahi, Saeed Mehdi Jalalati, Ali Aga uh, Babayi, and uh, Saeed Razbuhani, and Mosan Segdahat. Okay, so Zahadi was, was the most senior IRGC official to be deleted since the assassination of Qasem Soleimani by the United States in January of 2020. So now remember, when the situation occurred in January of 2020, just four years ago, with Soleimani, the Iranians put up a flag saying that they would vow to have revenge. So now, four years later, the aftermath of that situation shows many people that were attending a funeral service for these uh, IRGC soldiers on April the 4th, as well as several cities across Iran, including Tehran, uh, Tabriz, and Isfahan, having large crowds of protesters gathering, waving both the Palestinian flags, Iranian flags, and demanding for revenge. Folks, this is biblical prophecy, y'all. The things that we're seeing going on today are going to escalate. They're going to escalate into a global conflict. If this is making sense for you, put a one in the chat. If the information we're presenting for you makes sense, put a one in the chat. If anybody's confused, put a two in the chat. 
If anybody's confused as to what we're covering, put a two in the chat. Okay, good. So everybody's, everybody's, I got one. Okay, I got one. Okay, good. All right, so the people of these regions are protesting against the conflicts, showing you that they are not for war. The people that are witnessing these things, they are vowing for revenge. They're saying, look, we don't want this conflict to occur, but someone has to do something to stop it. You see? So now seven Israeli embassies were evacuated in response to the potential threat of an Iranian retaliatory attack after Iran publicly blamed the Israelis and vowed retaliation. The IDF uh, deployed GPS jamming systems within Tel Aviv to safeguard against potential aerial attacks by Iran. Initial U.S. intelligence anticipated a significant attack on the United States or Israeli assets as soon as the week of April the 8th between April the 12th. So now, why is this concerning for the United States? In the United States, they have had a vested interest in uh, investing money, resources to the Israeli government. And for those that are paying attention and those that are familiar with biblical-based prophecy, we know that this is prophesied in many of the religious writings of our ancestors, such as the prophet Joel, such as the prophet Amos, such as prophet Ezra. Various prophecies in the Bible talk about the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the uh, War of Armageddon, all nations being gathered together in a global conflict, all these things we see transpiring. So it's very important because Jesus the Christ said in the Bible to watch and pray, to watch and pray. So now, what was the response of the Iranian government? On April the 5th, Iran told the United States to step aside, meaning move out the way, as it prepared for the retaliation against Israel. On April the 13th, just yesterday, the IRGC Navy boarded the Portuguese commander ship MSC Ares in the Strait of Hormez via helicopter. It was redirected to Iranian territory. So now you got Canada being involved, Portuguese being involved, the United States being involved. Do you see why this is going to lead into conflict between various actors? These nation states are going to go to war with each other. God is going to make where people get agitated and so many, it's going to be the next thing. I'm telling you before it happens, uh, it says it was redirected to the Iranian territory. The MSC Ares is partially owned by Israeli businessman Ayal Ofer and operated by his company Zodiac Maritime. Later on April the 13th, 2024, the Iranian military launched hundreds of drones and fired ballistic missiles at Israel. So that's some some people are speculating anywhere between 300 to 500 showing you that they had a direct response to the situation. Several countries evacuated Tehran embassies and cut their airline flights. Okay, so the source for this information is, according to uh, Parisi Williams, sirens and blast sounds across Israel after Iran launches drone attack. And this is according to Reuters. That's Reuters News uh, for that update. Okay, so now what was Russia's response to the situation? Russia is now calling for restraint, okay, saying, look, these jokers need to calm down with what's going on. <laughs> Somebody said, I guess the Iron Dome is the iron after all. You're right. You're right. It's not. It's not. So just today, Russia said on Sunday it, it was extremely concerned by the Iranian airstrikes on Israel and called on all parties to exercise restraint, but some tensions would remain high until the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians was resolved. So now remember, these jokers are all cousins. They're all relate, related to each other in some way, shape or form, you know, to each other. So when somebody is living in Syria and they get attacked and 
and somebody else is living in Iran and now you have airlines being closed and consulates and embassies being closed that's showing you that something is, is something greater is on the works okay here's a quote from Reuters quote we express our extreme concern over any dangerous escalation in the region end of quote that's from Russia's military ministry and they said in a statement on uh, Iranian attacks, quote, we call all parties involved to exercise restraint, end of quote. So Russia noted that Tehran had said the attack was made within the right to self-defense after Israel's strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus that Moscow condemned. So that's something to consider. Will the small hats decide to discontinue their conflict by saying, okay, we, we, we messed up. We bombed a uh, consulate. My bad. Let's fix it. Let, let me try a, dip, a dipl diplomatic approach. If they got good sense, they'll do that. If they don't have good sense, which I'm assuming that they don't, their pride is going to cause them to continue in this endeavor. Here's why I say that. During the conflict that happened with the first, the second Iraq uh, conflict between the United States going to Iraq and Afghanistan, I recall, and I have a video on my channel where Benjamin Nasty Yahoo went over to the United States government, sat before their Congress, sat before their House of Representative and started accusing Iran and Iraq for being involved with something dealing with 9-11 when we know that it had to do with Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden, these type of people. Okay. So now Nastiyahu was antagonizing, was antagonizing and saying, look, you need to attack Iran. You need to. He was saying that for years. He was saying that for years. So now, utilizing the event that happened in October of 2023, they now said, OK, we're going to take the situation that happened in October and utilize that as a scapegoat to continue pursuing expansion and war and conflict in the Middle East. These jokers don't want peace, y'all. These global elites, they do not want peace. Constantly, they're always talking about war. They're always trying to get people involved in war. And now you have governments that are already at conflict saying, hey, look, you know, Russia's already in a conflict with Ukraine, but if they have to open their mouth to say, look, you need to back down off of this situation going on with Iran, you don't want the smoke, everybody needs to have cool heads, That's that should be something that we need to pay attention to. So somebody may ask the question, but who started October the 7th? This is not a this is not a conflict that started October the 7th. This has been going on since the 1920s and well after World War II. You understand what I'm saying? Don't use one event and one situation and not look at the overall package. The overall package is that this situation has been going on for decades. No one has had enough good sense to say, stop sending money over there to these people. Stop sending weapons over there to these people. Let them stop what they're doing. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop until they drag all these other nations, including the European Union, including the African Union, including NATO, including the United States into this conflict. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm doing is I'm trying to present the information in a way that I could try to prepare people just in case. If the conflicts escalates to your geographical location, you can say, OK, if this comes on the White House lawn, how do I prepare for it? If this egregious situation 
Because you know, there's there's people from these different groups that are that are living in different regions. Some of them live in the UK. Some of them live in the United States. What if they bring their conflict away from Northeast Africa, away from Western Asia, and now bring it over to the United States? You know, so we have family and friends that live in the United States, that live in the UK, and we want them to be mentally prepared just in case if this situation happens over there. You see what I'm saying? So um, it, it's not nothing to cause anybody to be uh, alarmed or have any trepidation in their heart, but you always want to be mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared for any scenario that can take place as a brother, as a father. As an uncle, it's my responsibility to, especially to my listeners, to to give them information and help them to biblically digest it. Because I speak from a biblical based worldview. Okay, all right. So let's continue with the article and what Russia was saying. It says Russia, which has close ties to Iran, said that the West had blocked attempts in the United Nations Security Council to respond to the Israeli strike on the consulate. So think about it. If you're having a national security meeting, right, and you're trying to figure out a way to resolve a conflict, sitting down at the table with everyone is in the best course of actions. But when when individuals start to refuse an open dialogue about the conflicts, then what's going to result? People are going to go back to their military advisors. They're going to go back to their their uh, uh, you know uh, secular advisors and say, "Hey, look, we tried to sit down at the table. We tried to discuss matters, but it seems like there's no there's no olive branches being extended." You see what I'm saying? Let's read on. It says, "Quote: We have repeatedly warned that numerous unresolved crises in the Middle East." primarily in the past Palestinian Israeli conflict zone, which are often fueled by irresponsible provocation actions will lead an increase in tension. The ministry said, you see that? So the Kremlin has yet to uh, comment publicly, but former president, uh, former Russian, Russian president, Dmitry Medvedi, I'm sorry, Medvedev, I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly, said that the war between Israel and Iran would worsen Joe Biden's, President Joe Biden's prospect as being reelected as the United States president. Quote, America does not want a big war in the, quote, Middle East. Um, he said this on Telegram. Quote, the deletions in Gaza worsened Biden's prospects in the elections and war between Israel, Lees and Iran would introduce additional uncertainty. So now, with that being said, folks, I want to ask a question to those that have continued to listen to the Forefront Radio. Over the past couple of days and weeks, did we not go over... Matthew 24 about wars and rumors of wars and increased activity. Uh, yes or no? We literally talked about this maybe uh, a month or two ago, maybe two, three months ago. But I remember having a discussion with those that were on this platform. And I was saying that not only will the wars happen, but you will see an increase in the activity. It's just like a woman that's pregnant. First, the woman is pregnant, right? It takes about 40 weeks, nine months, nine to 10 months for the baby to come forth. Okay. Somebody said we need Trump. We do not need another political advocate. Listen, listen to what I'm saying, folks. Whether it's left wing or right wing, it's still the same bird. Meaning, this is not something that you could look at and say, let me choose a p political candidate on this spectrum versus this spectrum. That's not, that's, it, this surpasses voting. This, you can't vote your way out of war. Do you understand what I'm saying? Trump would say, get Iran. That's a bad idea. That's a very bad idea. Okay, let me, let me, let me help you to see it. Let me help you to see it. Let me help you to see it. Let's go to the book of Joel, 
chapter 3. Let's start at verse 1. It says, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So now, when you read the Bible, you find out, according to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2, that the tribe of Judah, they are blackened to the ground. That's Jeremiah 14, verse 2. The tribe of Judah went into captivity after, after the Grecian and Roman invasion of Northeast Africa. Okay? This is going all the way back to the time of Christ up until now. After Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, the original Afro-Hebraic people groups that lived in that area were scattered. Millions of Jews fled into Africa. Okay, Some of them remained in Asia Minor and in other parts of, of that region until they were captured and colonized and and enslaved by the Romans. So now fast forward in the Bible. Yes. Some went into Ethiopia as well. Correct. Okay. What is Asia minor? So Asia minor is that region that we know of as like Cappadocia, uh, Turkey, uh, Smyrna, Ephesus, uh, Istanbul. Those are the regions that they call Asia minor. The just a smaller Think of it as Northeast Africa, Western Asia. That's that's what they call Asia Minor. Okay, so the area from uh, the borders of the land of Israel going into Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, Istanbul, Kazakhstan, Iran, Iraq region, going up north now into uh, passing the Caspian, passing the Black Sea, going into Greece. The, the former Grecian Empire, those areas. That's Asia Minor, okay? So let's read on. It says, verse 2, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So now when you read Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse uh, 26, you find out that the Israelites in ancient times, Correct. The Hittites, the Canaanites, Akkadians, the Hurrians, that was that region, Asia Minor. Very good. Shalom to you. Hope you're doing well. Peace and blessings to you. Hope the family's doing well. So now, notice that in this biblical text, we find that the Creator is saying that He's going to gather all nations, meaning there has to be some sort of conflict or agitation that will that will uh, cause other nations to become involved with a, with a greater internal struggle. So the small hats who convinced their people to convert to Judaism, who originally came from Poland, from Russia, from Germany, who were of European descent, they originally wanted to invade Uganda and take that as the Holy Land. But to make some of the uh, secular humanist ideology known as Zionism stick, they convinced their religious leaders as well as their political leaders to go into that area of Northeast Africa known as Palestine. Okay, it was called Palestine by the Romans. So now when you read about when you read about God gathering the nations into the Valley of Jehoshaphat, you have to understand the historical reference. Historically speaking, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, there were several nations that were involved with the conflict against the Israelites. This included the uh, nation states of Moab. This included the nation states of Ammon. This included the uh, Idumeans, also known as Edom. OK, so now who did these nations equate to today? The Moabites, they were taken by the Babylonian Kushites all the way across into the areas of Mongoloid, uh, Mongolia and China. So the Moabites are the so-called Chinese. The Ammonites, they were taken as far east as the area we know as, as Japan today. So Moab, that represents the Chinese. Shalom to you. Hope you're doing well. Moab, that represents the Chinese. Ammon, that represents the, the uh, Japanese. So now Edom or Idumea, 
This represents the Macedonian Greeks, the Romans, and who we call today people of uh, of Anglo-European descent. Okay? I am, same to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So when you read about the Valley, Valley of Jehoshaphat, you have to look at the modern terms today for these biblical base entities, because nobody calls them Ammon today. Nobody calls them Moab today. Nobody calls them them Edom today. You have to go to their modern names. Okay. So their modern names today would include China, Japan, and the, the uh, Greco-Roman descendants. So now notice these nation states were involved with the conflict in World War I and World War II, right? China got involved with the war. Japan got involved with it during World War II. America got involved with it. The Europeans in, in uh, France, Germany, the UK, they got all involved with this conflict of World War II. So now, right now we're seeing a conflict going on between uh, the Europeans of the Israeli state, as well as the Ishmaelites of the Arabic state. And now they are now in turn causing other nation states to be involved with their issue. So now Russia is coming involved and saying, hey, put the horses on it. Stop. Calm down. The United States recently also said they don't want to be involved with this situation. Recently, um, I posted another article on our Discord channel that President Biden was saying that he did not want to get involved with this conflict either. But the problem is, what's going on that we see is that these nations are going to drag themselves all into this, which will lead to World War III. So just recently, I posted this um, earlier today on my on my TikTok channel. Biden literally told Netanyahu that he that the United States will not participate in offensive operations against Iran. So now I want you to think about this for a moment. Two years ago, the United States that they said that they would not involve themselves with the situation occurring between Ukraine and Russia. They said, we don't want anything to do with it. But subsequently, over time, as time elapsed, you saw the United States sending billions of dollars of funds over to Ukraine, as well as billions of dollars of funds over to the Israeli state with the blue and white flag. So now, Although they said they're not going to get involved offensively between Russia and Ukraine, eventually now in 2024, we find out that United States mercenary groups are over there involving themselves with that situation. So whether they say openly or secretly, they're still being involved. So now here's the problem. The United States is burning the cigarette at both ends of the stick. They're burning the candle at both ends of the stick, meaning you're sending money and military weapons over to Ukraine. You're sending money and military weapons over to the Israeli state. So at both ends of the spectrum, you're assisting the same similar people groups of the Ukrainians, the Polish, the, the, the Germanic tribes that went and invaded that region and called themselves Zionists, right? So now, why is that important to understand? They're saying right now, prior to their election, that they do not want to become involved with a conflict between Iran. But unfortunately, folks, even though they state one thing, they may state one thing, but the actions are different. Somebody says, why are you lying? Listen. The Forefront Radio has been established since 2020. We are a reputable source of information. We have reached over 4.5 million viewers, 1.5 million on YouTube. Okay? This is not just some regular joker on the internet that's just talking out of his buttocks. We, we share information to inform people. Okay? 
So if I'm lying, just continue to scroll. Go watch people eating Tic Tacs on TikTok. <laughs> okay. For those that like information, somebody, somebody said America did not say they were not going to help. Okay, let me... <sighs> You did not hear my information. I said initially, two years ago, the United States said they would not become involved militarily. But now in 2024, they are being involved milit. People don't pay attention. <laughs> People hear what they want to hear. People hear what they want to hear. Now I got to go pull out the receipt receipts. Ah, <sighs> let me go pull up the receipts one second. <laughs> Give me one moment while I pull up the uh, information. Uh people didn't listen to Jesus either and still don't. You exactly right. You you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Thank you. All right, let me read this article. It says the United States and NATO helped trigger the Ukraine war. It's not siding with Putin to admit it. But Moscow's cruel overreaction deserves emphatic condemnation. This is a commentary on Cato dot o r g it is based on a newsweek article from march the 7th 2022 you know what i'm not, I'm not even going to do that i'm not even going to go into it i i, I don't want to waste my time just trying to uh, prove a, a comment to wrong let me just continue with with my uh discussion let me just continue with my discussion because in the age of information ignorance is a choice if you choose not to listen to information and research it that's fine. Just continue scrolling. Okay. Let's just continue with the discussion. Like I came to the realization, like, why am I trying to prove a comment to wrong? I got a platform with over <laughs> literally like one YouTube channel got 12,000 subscribers. Another one has about eight reached a lot of people. So why would I waste my time with just a comment on, on the internet? Let me just continue. So we, we want to understand that conflicts that are occurring in the so-called Middle East can eventually knock on doors here in the United States. So now, while Israel is on the edge of uh, the Iranian uh, retaliation after the embassy strike, what should we as citizens of the global world have an understanding of. We have to have an understanding that countries, including India, France, Poland, Russia, have warned their citizens against travel to the region, which is already on the edge of this war and conflict now in its seventh month. So now the White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the threat from Iran was real and viable. So the Israeli military, they just didn't care. They didn't care. They just went over there. They uh, they bombed a embassy specifically targeting one or two different individuals. And now people are confused, like, okay, why is there a military response going on? Shalom to you, uh, Yaabe. Shalom to you, uh, Elizabeth. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the greetings. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone that um, subscribes to the Forefront Radio. Please do me a favor, folks. We got uh, about 290 plus people in the room. Um, can we please get the likes up? Tap the screen to at least at least a minimum of 10K. You know how algorithms work on the internet. The more that you share and the more that you tap the screen, TikTok will send notifications to different people and bring them into the discussion. Okay, so please do me a favor. 
with 300 plus people in the room. There's no reason why we can't get up to at least 10K. Okay, tap the screen. Let's get the likes up. Share the room with at least 10 people. Okay. <laughs> the commenter said all of Russia is fighting. Uh, all of NATO is fighting Russia and Russia is still winning. That's an interesting comment. So over the past uh, few days, right, the military has conducted situ situational assessments about the approval plans for long range of scenarios following reports and statements that Iran would eventually attack. OK, so the Israel's foreign ministry didn't comment on the reports that some Israeli diplomat diplomatic missions had been partially evacuated and security had stepped up. But, quote, the revenge will come. So they already knew. This was from a newspaper by uh, uh, uh Aronoth. Okay. They knew that that situation with them bombing that consulate of Iran, and it was right there in Syria, that Iran would get themselves in involved. They knew what they were doing. Like I said, they sit down in meetings and talk about things before they do it. It's not just some jughead behind the uh, uh, controller saying, let me send a military drones and let me send this over there. These jokers sit down in meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings and talk and discuss and debate and dialogue. And then they say, what's the best course of action? So that preemptive strike on the Israeli uh, taking taking suit to go against the the uh, Ishmaelites was planned. So now we have to understand that Israel did not claim responsibility for the airstrike when it happened, but they but newspapers in the nation state of Israel said, "Yeah, they did it." Wait for the moment to come. And now we see that happening today. Yesterday and today on the news, April the 13th through the 14th, you see that Iran now responded by sending 300 military drones. So now my question for the critical thinker is this. My question for the critical thinker is that uh, the Philistines don't exist no more. It's Persia. Those people from. Um, the Bible says that there is no end of all the people. So the peoples of the Bible still exist. The Philistines still exist today. The Ishmaelites still exist today. The Persians still exist today. Remember, names of people and groups change over time, but they still exist. So although they may not use the term Philistines, those people still exist today. Okay. Uh, uh, Russia calling for restraint is rich. I agree with that statement. It's rich while nations are going to war, but they're telling other nations to stop. That's the same that that's the same statement I would say for the, for the United States because the United States will tell people don't get involved with a conflict, but yet and still many of the citizens don't even know that the United States over the last 20 years had over 100,000 airstrikes in the so-called Middle East and in Africa, okay? And this was early on in, under the uh, Obama administration, and people don't even realize it. Under former President Bush, former President uh, Barack Obama, uh, former President Trump, and current President Joe, Joe Biden, the United States has continually sent military drones, missiles, airstrikes, to various regions all over the Middle East and in Africa. But nobody bats an eye. Nobody even nobody even says that's rich. You see what I'm saying? Over seven countries, including Yemen, including Sudan, including Afghanistan, including Iraq, including uh, uh, Syria. OK, uh, it's hard to read with the white background. And OK, sure. Let me change the background for 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 folks. Okay, I'm gonna change the background to this. All right, is that easier to see the comments now? Is that better? Can you see the comments a little bit better now? 
It's hard to read the comments while the, with the white background. Okay, so we changed it to a different background. Hopefully, you're able to see the comments a lot better. All right. So now the United States sent seven countries back to the Stone Age <laughs> by sending military drones and airstrikes to that region. Okay, but nobody bats an eye. Let me go to that article real quick. Let me pull that article up for you real quick. This is dated from NBC News. Uh, NBC News. This is dated 2017. This is also from the Associated Press, January 9th, 2017. Listen close. United States bombed Iraq. That's one. Syria. That's two. Pakistan. That's three. Afghanistan, that's four. Libya, that's five. Yemen, that's six. Somalia, that's seven. And Sudan, that's eight. Okay. This is one of the many reasons people should not have free speech. Wait a minute. I don't understand your comment. Okay. Let's send you to Blockonda forever. Blockonda forever. I promise you, I'm not here for uh, entertainment purposes. This is for educational purposes only. If people don't want to hear the content, there's there's so much stuff you could do on TikTok. You can watch people dance. You can watch cat videos. You can watch dog videos. You can watch people eat tomatoes on TikTok. TikTok is so filled with a lot of information. But why waste your time coming on my platform and saying, this is why freedom of speech should not be allowed? It, it's as if... When you read articles in the news and read information, people say, no, don't inform me. I want to remain ignorant of reality. Okay, well then continue. Continue. You know, watch cat videos. You know, all I, all I do is when I see these comments, I block them. And when my moderators see it, they block them as well. It's, it's really that simple. Okay. I'm sharing this information for educational purposes only. Don't utilize this platform as, as a means of, of argument, debate. You know, we're here to share general, general information just to inform the public. There's information that has been withholding for us for, me, for years. For years. Okay. So, you know, this is according to NBCnews.com. So, if somebody says that I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm lying for reading an article. Go back and investigate the article for it yourself. I'm giving you the title of the article. It says the United States bombed Iraq, Syria, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen, Somalia in 2016. So now I'm going to read the headline. It says the sub the subline. It says, oh, I appreciate the truth as well. I appreciate it as well. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much, Tanya. It says the United States dropped 26,000 bombs on seven countries in 2016. So now nobody investigated if it has nuclear armaments attached to it. You remember during the Iraq war, they were finding out that some of the uh, uh, military uh, weaponry and armaments was laced with uh, a tad bit of radiation materials. Y'all know about that? I hope you do. So, seven countries, close to 30,000 bombs from the United States. That was just in 20, 20, 2016. Do you think Iraq is still upset about that? Do you think Syria is still upset about that? Do you think Pakistan is still upset about that? Do you think Afghanistan... Libya, Yemen, Somalia, Sudan. Do you think they would still be upset about that? This was 2016. I don't know. Maybe we live in a society where people forget stuff and they say, you know what? You know, let, let bygones be bygones. Let everybody love and kumbaya. You know, but I think reality is not the case. I think reality is not the case. I think, I think, um, they haven't forgot that. I think they have not forgotten it. I think they, 
would still have a concern for the people that were impacted because of that situation. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so now the United States dropped an average of 72 bombs per day. This is according to NBC News, the equivalent of three an hour. In 2016, according to an analysis of American airstrikes around the world, the report from the Council of Foreign Relations comes as President, former President Barack Obama finishes up his presidency, one that began with promises of withdrawal from inter international conflicts. So now, according to the New York City-based think tank, approximately, and this is about an average, 26,171 bombs were dropped on Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen, Somalia, and Pakistan during that year. You see? So, with the recent situation going on in the so-called Middle East, we see that it's very telling of... The, the, I don't want to use the word hypocrisy, but I can't think, what's another word I could use besides hypocrisy? For nation states that say, hey, you shouldn't be involved in war, you need to back off, but then they in turn drop almost 30,000 bombs on seven different countries. Like, what other word, can you give me a word, commenters? Put it in the comments. Like, what can, what other comment can I give besides hypocrisy? I'm, I'm at a loss for words because the United States, as far as I know, would go and tell other countries, you know, we need to have diplomatic ties. We need to, you know, shut down any type bully. Hmm. Would I use bully? I don't know. I really have to think about that for a second. Like, what's another term for someone that like says something in one double talk? OK, I like that. I like that. That's more. I guess the term double talk would be a lot more uh, uh, more uh, politically friendly, I guess, right? That would be a little bit, because uh, uh, hypocrite is so, it's so harsh. You know, that term hypocrite is very, it's strong. It's a strong term. But double talk, that's a little bit more softer. I think that'll be a little bit more palatable for the people. What, what do you think? Double standards. Thank you. So double talk, double standards, irony. Th those are all things that I would look to say that, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I, um, somebody says, I want to understand the reasoning behind the bombings. Okay. Let's understand the reasoning behind the bombings. You have a boogeyman. You have a boogeyman called the global war on terror. Okay. The global war on terror is a pretext to continually have conflict. Here's why I say that. When you have an ambiguous term, such as insurgent, such as terrorist, such as uh, militant combatant, and you don't identify and specific, uh, make a specific claim on who that entity is, and throw them in jail, that will cause you as a military government to continue having conflicts. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down and make it as easy to understand as it relates to the United States. Okay. In the 1960s, you had something called the civil rights error. It's deeper than that, brother. I agree with you, but I, I, I try to make it very simplistic to understand. I'm of the old Dodge. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So let me give you this parable and we can parallel what we're talking about here. You had something called the war on drugs. In the 1960s, you had so-called African-Americans and other minority groups, such as Italians, such as Hispanics, such as uh, Jewish people and other groups fighting for civility in the United States. There was a lot of different uh, conflicts going on with ra race relations, and they were trying to find a way to create some sort of peace. So you had the civil rights era that started in the 1960s up until the Civil Rights Act in, in 1965. The then U.S. government 
with the under the direction of the FBI, had counterintelligence programs, also known as COINTELPRO, where they were fighting against people that just wanted the nation state to leave them the hell alone. Okay. So what ended up happening after the civil rights era, you had the quote unquote hippie movement with the introduction of marijuana and other illicit recreational drug usage, right? So now what ended up happening is now fast forward to 1980s, 1999, where now hardcore recreational drugs started to flood urban communities, okay? Now, all of a sudden, you had an epidemic of minority groups who are suffering from drug abuse. So instead of pro providing these people groups assistance, uh, funding, investing in resources available to help alleviate this drug crisis, they said, let's go to war, let's go to war, let's go to war. And they called it the quote unquote war on drugs. So now subsequently for years, you found many minority groups that were thrown in prison due to that health crisis that they were dealing with. How does that parallel now to today? It parallels in the sense of this. They have now a war on terrorism. It's a vague term. It doesn't apply to any specific people groups, but it allows it allows the opening of the doors of the military industrial complex to continue to go to war. All they got to do is say, hey, this person attacked us preemptively. Now we have to retaliate. That's all it is. <laughs> all those hippies became yuppies and are now CEOs and politicians. Yep, you can't make it up. That's exactly true. That's exactly true. I agree with that statement. <laughs> I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. I agree with that statement. So now we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about uh, drug usage just, just momentarily. I find it ironic. I find it double talk. I find it as a double standard, i.e. hypocritical. For a nation state now to say that we have a quote unquote opioid crisis, now that people of a particular demographic are suffering from fentanyl, uh, Narcan, methadone, uh, oxycodone, Valium addictions, and I find it double talk that now they're viewing these addictions as a crisis instead of a war. Notice, notice the variation in the 80s and 90s when minority groups were suffering from alcoholism, heroin addiction, um, cocaine and crack addiction. They did not get the necessary assistance that they needed. But now... You have other demographic groups of the predominant society that are suffering in the same way with these addictions, but instead of somebody locking up these individuals and throwing away the key, they are in turn doing what? Oh, we have an opioid crisis in America. People are addicted to fentanyl. People are addicted. That's called double talk. That right there is the chickens coming home to roost. That right there is divine judgment. It's the old adage, folks. What goes around comes around. Now, put a one in the chat if this makes sense, because is, is this just mere speculation, or is this statistically proven that we see what happened in the 80s and 90s being addressed with police and military personnel with batons and guns and badges and 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 uh, uh uh handcuffs 
dealing with people that had a health crisis, but now in 2024, Yeah, there's good and bad in every people group. We're we're just talking specifically on observations that we're making. We're not we're not sp- specifying any people, any nation. That's not what we're doing what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're we're pointing out certain parallels that we need to note. Okay. Uh, laugh my ass off. What do you? want the police to throw flowers. Okay. Do I want the police to throw flowers? Okay. How do I address this comment from the commenter? Let's say your mom is sick. Let's say your mom is sick. Uh, Guess who's not you? Let's say your mom is sick and your mom goes to the hospital and your, your doctor prescribes your your um mom let's say oxycodone right your mom goes to the doctor for two or three visits every visit she goes she gets oxycodone then what ends up happening is she no longer can afford to go to get oxycodone and she goes down the street and someone provides her with fentanyl without a prescription. The police encounter her. She doesn't have a prescription. Should she go to jail? Yes or no? Write it in the chat. Should she go to jail? Yes or no? She doesn't have the fentanyl prescription. The police catch her with the prescription. Yes or no? Okay, somebody says no. Now, let's reverse it now. Let's say your mother is suffering from a debilitating disease. Your mother went to take oxycodone from the doctor. So now she runs out of her medication. She goes down the street and instead of taking fentanyl, It's a heroin dealer now injecting heroin into her system. Should she go to jail now once the police officers catch her? Yes or no? I'm sorry to hear what happened to your husband. I'm sorry to hear what happened to your husband. You see, I'm trying to get you to reason and see see what's going on in America. You can't say that one form of sorcery is bad and then turn around and say one form of sorcery is good. It's both sorcery. They all have harmful side effects. So now the Bible forewarns about sorcery and we want to assist the people to know the difference. There are natural medicines, herbs that help. When you're suffering from some sort of sickness, for example, I worked in the medical field and when somebody had an injury or a burn, they would put sports medicine green uh, cream that had aloe vera in it. So now a lot of people that were injured, I told them, you know what, instead of going and paying 12 bucks, 13 bucks, 15 bucks to the pharmacy, Just go to a farmer and ask them for aloe vera, cut the plant and just rub the gel directly on your leg. Instantly, they came back and was like, man, bro, you saved me so much money. I didn't realize that the main ingredient in the sports medicine cream was actually aloe vera and I could just cut the plant and rub it on my leg. That's the difference, folks, between the modern sorcery of today versus natural herbal remedies that come from plants. Bay leaves have healing properties, too. I didn't know that. I got to research about bay leaves. So now I want to read something in the Bible and I want to parallel it to this discussion we're talking about. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18, verse uh, let's start at verse 23. It said, this is talking about Babylon the Great. Okay. This is talking about Babylon the Great. It says, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. 
and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So now let's break this down. The term merchant goes into people that trade over the seas. When you say myrrh, you think of like mermaid, like a woman that's in the water. Woman in the myrrh means water. Maid means woman. Mermaid, woman in the water. So merchant is going into international trade. Okay. So, so God is speaking about Babylon the Great in this passage and saying that this system is responsible for international trade. So now when it says merchants of the earth, that means now all the corporations, all the corporations have entered ties with a particular global power that has access to international trade. So now question for the critical thinker, does the United States have access to international trade? Yes, or no? Write it in the chat. Write it in the chat. Does the United States have access to international trade? Yes or no? Yes. Think about the question uh, for a globe. Okay. When you, th when you think of commerce, you have your Amazon. Amazon ships overseas. You have your Walmart. Walmart ships overseas going in between what? China and United States. The products come from China. They go over the ocean. And there you go. Of course. So when it says the merchants of the earth, that's going into what? Corporations. 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 So it says the merchants of the earth are great and they have inter ties with this global entity. So now notice what it says also. It says, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So now, when you look up the modern word sorcery, it comes from an ancient Greek word. The ancient Greek word for sorcery is pharmakia. I'm going to spell it for you so that way you can type it in the chat. Okay. Pharmakia is spelled F, I'm sorry, P H A R M A K E I A. Write it in the chat. This is the word we're going to look up pharmakia. Okay, pharmakia. So the term pharmakia is where we get the modern word pharmacy. So the word pharmakia is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, and let's find out what word is used for pharmakia. Let's read that real quick. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 says this. It says, idolatry, idolatry, witchcraft, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. So wait a minute. The term witchcraft is a similar term to the word what? Sorcery sorcery. So so let's put the pieces together. You have sorcery and witchcraft known as pharmakia in the ancient Greek. The ancient Greek term for pharmakia is the modern word today known as what? Pharmacy, pharmacy. So now, sorcery, witchcraft, pharmakia is used in a generic term in English for the word drug. Are you beginning? So the modern English term is a pharmacy or a pharmacist. They, they used to use the term alchemy 
or alchemist or chemist, but now the modernized term is the pharmacy or the pharmacist. So now the modern day term of sorcery, when you think of that, you think of witches casting spells, you think of some little old lady with a crooked nose and a mole on her face. That's not what that's going into, folks. The real pharmacia is a form of drug abuse. So now I want you to really think about this now. Who is the largest producer and manufacturer of not only pharmaceutical, but also recreational drugs? Does this sound like the United States? Yes or no? I never heard of heroin until the United States. I never heard of crack until the United States. I've never heard of so many people impacted on a global level by pharmaceutical administrations of what? Vaccination administrations that came from the United States. Drug prescriptions from various places like Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer Corporation, Moderna Corporation, right? All to make money. Showing you that what we're reading in the Bible is not some abstract book. It's a real book concerning history, biblical-based prophecies, predictions, and current events that we could see today. Current events that we could see today. Okay? That's correct. We all watch the movies. We see different stories. We used to associate sorcery with like the Wizard of Oz, Harry Potter, you know, these little goofy kids books that we see. Okay. But the real deal sorcery and witchcraft is the pharmaceutical industry. Listen, folks, they're not going around with brooms and, 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 and uh, flying across the sky like they tell us on the Disney Channel. The reality of the matter is, in uh, what is this? <sighs> so once again, after speaking factual information, the uh, TikTok deities decided through their algorithm to restrict my account. So this is 18 years and older. I'm just, I'm just going to have to restart the live now because I know that the numbers are going to start to drop immediately. We're going to have to do a part two, folks. Make sure you're following this account. I'm going to go into part two of this discussion because they just literally just restricted my account to 18 years or older. So please make sure you go to the top of my account, hit the forefront radio, follow it, and then we're going to go to part two of this discussion. I'm already starting to see the numbers drop off. It was it was initially at 300 people, and then due to the fact that, um, you know, t the TikTok deities started to uh, <laughs> restrict it, it's already dropping back down to like 150. So half of the people listening were already dropped off due to the restriction. So please follow this account quickly. I'm going to give you all 30 seconds to uh, follow the account, and then we're going to go into part two of the discussion. Okay, we touch primarily on the conflict going on in um, in the nation state of Israel of the Israelis in Iran. Now we're going to go into part two of our discussion, going into the pharmaceutical industry. So let's uh, share share the room once we start back up again. Make sure you follow this account. If you're not subscribed to this account, I recommend doing so. Um, my account has been deleted off of the internet. Uh, this is like my third or fourth account. So, you know, subscribing will thank you so much. Great conversation. Thank you so much for listening. And I really appreciate every single one of you. I'm going to have to restart the live, unfortunately, uh, due to the fact that the information we share gets censored. So I'm going to restart the live in about another 20 seconds. Make sure you tap on my profile and follow this account so we can continue on our discussion in regards to uh, sorcery and the pharmaceutical industry. All right. Um, about 10 more seconds or so. If you haven't followed this account, tap on the screen 
right at the top. Make sure you hit follow. So the next time we uh, go live stream, you'll get a notification sent directly to your phone. Uh, thank you, Jizzle, for the uh, uh, gift. Thank you for joining on the team. I appreciate you. We got 61 people that are on the team. So if you want, there's a heart button at the top. Tap the heart button. It, it sends a GIF and then boom, you're able to join on the team. Notifications get sent to you immediately. Um, also, for those that are uh, inclined, we do have a Discord channel. Um, you can follow the Forefront Radio on TikTok, as well as YouTube, iHeartRadio, and many other platforms. But we're going to restart the live I already see the live dropping down to 100. So people that don't have accounts that are 18 or older, they're getting booted off my live. All right. So let's go ahead and restart the live. Stay tuned, folks, for more.